Hello, Steam Deck family, Liam here. Valve has now finally released SteamOS 3.5 into preview, meaning it's now actually ready for more people to try it and give their feedback. First up, to actually get the update, you'll need to press the Steam button, head into the settings, to system, and then in the update channel drop-down box, select preview. After that, it will need to reboot, and then you'll need to go back there again and hit check for updates where it will start the download and then it will reboot once more to apply the update. Now as for what's new, there is loads. I won't run over every individual bit, just a couple of the major changes for you. Starting with the biggest user facing change, which is the new screen color space settings. By default, the Steam Deck has actually changed the default color settings to emulate the sRGB color gamut, resulting in slightly warmer and more vibrant color appearance. You can change this in the main Steam settings, go into display, and there's a new button that says adjust display colors, and then you can go in there and change the color vibrance and the color temperature together. Fun fact, if you do this while in game, it will then give you the two sliders as an overlay on top of the game so that you can actually see it directly in action. So here I'm messing with the sliders and you can see what a difference it makes. The newer SRBG emulated mode by default really does improve the coloring quite nicely. And since you can boost it further with the color temperature too, it just gives you more options to play the Steam Deck how you want. Seeing is believing though, so here's a video from my camera where you'll see pretty darn clearly what a difference even just the new default is before you mess around with the color temperature. The original display mode really did have some pretty washed out coloring, whereas the new default is just that bit nicer and bit richer, and that's even before you mess with the color temperature settings. It's just so much better as you can tell, but again, having these options means you can tweak it yourself to your own liking. There's a bunch of other new display settings now as well with HDR and VRR, that's variable refresh rate. They can be enabled in the quick access menu if your display and adapters plugged into the deck actually support it. Plus there's new HDR and SDR settings in the main display settings section of the Steam Deck settings so you can just tweak everything and get it where you want it. On top of that, the quick access scaling settings have been split between the scaling mode and the scaling filter, so you can use them as you see fit and mix and match. This includes the original AMD FSR and Nvidia image scaling on top of stretch and zoom options. So again, it's all about Valve giving you the tools to play with it how you want. You'll also notice in the storage section of the settings, it will now show you how much space is taken by shaders, which will help stop so much confusion on where all your space is going. Because ever since the Steam Deck came out, there has just been endless posts across Reddit, in our Discord and everywhere of people wondering where all their space is going. And it was pretty much always the shaders taking up that space. So having it there, clearly written, is obviously a good thing. Another change is finally auto mounting of external drives. So as an example, here I have a JSOX dock with a really old external drive of mine. And after I plug it in, you will see that the new drive appears and then I can select it to format it all within Steam's gaming mode interface. And just to show that auto mounting does work, here it is now unplugged. And after I plug it back in, and the drive actually takes a minute to spin up again, you'll see it briefly flash in the storage menu, and then I can go and select it as it's detected properly. All of this at the tap of a button. No more messing around in desktop mode to format and mount drives. Really good stuff. There's a lot more to this update, including a new updated Arch Linux base with a upgraded Linux kernel. There's an upgraded KDE Plasma desktop mode, and you can now even customize the performance overlay to your liking. So right now on Steam Deck with the performance overlay, you have the different presets from Valve that I'm flicking through just to refresh your memory and show you them. And it's great as a built-in feature, but what if you want to change what it actually displays? 
Well, you now can officially. It is supported and added in SteamOS 3.5. It does require just a little bit of know-how though, but I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. What you'll need to do is go into desktop mode and open up the Dolphin file manager and make sure it's in the home folder. Now go up to the little hamburger menu and show the hidden files. Next up, you need to go into the .config folder that appeared and make a folder called Mango HUD, capital M, capital H. And inside here, make a file named presets.conf. Inside the presets file, you'll need a heading in brackets for each of the numbered performance overlay presets. So just channeling my early kids crafting TV, here's what I made earlier. Now by default, the Mango Herd performance overlay will have FPS, frame timing, CPU and GPU stats all forced on. So if you don't want them, you have to add them as zero. So for the first one, I just want the battery status. For the second one, I want it horizontal so it goes across the top of the screen with the actual current time, battery and FPS. And then for the third, just have it be full so it is the entire thing and not horizontal so it goes down vertically. One key point for the horizontal layout is to use table columns to ensure it has enough space for each item, otherwise the display will be kind of messed up. Once saved, you can just go back into gaming mode and then you'll be able to see it in action showing exactly what I've set. So here in game, I'm going into the quick settings and turning on number one to show that just the battery as I set. And then over to the second one, it will show the FPS, battery and time. And the third has everything in full, all working as expected. So it just takes a few minutes but it's worth doing if you want it to show exactly what you want. All the config options are available on the Mango Herd GitHub page that I'll link in the description, as there's lots of combinations to try. There's quite a lot of options of things that you can add and remove. Again, this is just an example to basically get you going. And if you do want to go back to the defaults that Valve set, you can just remove the presets file that you made. There's a lot more to the update with plenty of fixes and improvements. I'm just cherry picking some of the major features to show you. Some of the other stuff included is an updated graphics driver with various performance improvements for multiple games. They've improved Bluetooth connection stability, especially with multiple controllers. They improved the latency in certain situations where the application renders slower than the display's refresh rate. They fixed an issue where certain workloads would exhibit severe CPU performance issues unless SMT was manually disabled, so you should no longer need to mess about with that, and lots and lots more. So I hope you found that overview interesting. Do let me know how you get on with SteamOS 3.5 preview in the comments, and I'll see you later.